Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this amazing pork shoulder roast using my Emerald Agassi Power Air Fryer 360. Now I was inspired to do this roast after watching Todd over on Dad Incredible do a rotisserie pork roast and it looked absolutely delicious so I thought I would give it a try. Now, Todd did his on a charcoal grill with a rotisserie attachment. And unfortunately, my grill does not have that. But like I said, I do have this power air fryer that has a rotisserie function. So I'm just going to use this and see how it all turns out. Now, just to be completely honest, I have never rotisserie cooked anything ever in my life. So bear with me if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. We're just going to have to try to learn this together. So to start, I picked up a four pound boneless pork shoulder roast. And once I got it out of the package, I gave it a quick rinse and pat it dry with some paper towels. And I have to admit, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the roast was already wrapped in this netting, I guess you would call it. Um, this saved me the step of having to try and truss it up myself later, which I wouldn't have known how to do anyway. Next, I applied a generous amount of rub all over. And again, this is Todd's recipe, and I will leave all of the ingredients and the link to his channel in the description box below. Once the rub is applied, I let the roast hang out for about 15 minutes while I got the oven ready. After about 15 or so minutes, it was time to actually attach the pork onto the rotisserie. And I have to admit, it wasn't as daunting as I thought it would be. You basically just take the rod and pierce it through the middle of the roast. And I did have to adjust it a few times but I think I got it. And once that is through the middle of the roast, you attach the two end pieces, I guess. I'm not really sure what they're called. I guess these little piercing prongs onto the end of the roast to keep it stable. And that I did struggle a little bit with, but in the end it was fine and I got it. Finally, it was time to get it into the rotisserie, and all I had to do was attach the rod into the rotisserie slots that were on either side of the machine. Then I turned it to the rotisserie setting and set the temperature at 350, and I set the timer for an hour and a half. I wasn't sure exactly how long it was going to take, but all of the recipes and research that I read said that it can take anywhere between an hour and an hour and 20 minutes. So I figured I would just set it at an hour and a half and start checking it after an hour. And this is the first peak after about a half hour of cooking. And so far, so good. And this is how we were looking at just about the one hour mark. The color was looking really good and the house is smelling amazing. And I'm getting really excited for dinner all of a sudden. Okay, so we had about 25 minutes left on the timer and I decided to see where we were with the internal temperature. So after checking in two separate spots, it looked like it was at 135. So it definitely needed a little more time, but 
We are getting closer, my friends. Once we reached the last 10 minutes, I checked the temp again and it was sitting nice at 153. So I decided to take it out of the oven and let it rest on the counter for another 10 minutes. And this is how it looks after resting for about 15 minutes and after I removed all of the twine and got it ready to carve. And I have to admit, it is looking really good. And for this being my first ever rotisserie, I am so proud of it and so excited. And now that my family is screaming about dinner, let me just get this carved up and ready to serve. And this is how everything turned out. I served it up with some homemade mashed potatoes and decided to go a little old school and added some jellied cranberry as well. It all turned out so, so good and everyone seemed to love it. So I have a feeling I will definitely be doing this again. I hope you all enjoyed and if you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also don't forget to go check out Todd over on Dad Incredible. He does a ton of great cooking videos and again, I will leave the link to his channel in the description box below. So that will be it for me today guys and please remember to stay safe out there and I will see you all in the next one.